Capacitors are some of the most common electronics components, and quite often you'll have to find the values of these capacitors. For some of them, it is quite easy, like in these large electrolytic capacitors. But for other capacitors, you'll have to spend some time looking at them. Sometimes you may even be unlucky and have one that doesn't have any markings left. Now to solve all these problems, you can buy a multimeter that has a capacitance measuring feature built in. However, not all of them have that feature. So in today's video, I will show you how you can make your own capacitance meter so that you are able to measure any capacitor you may want to. To start, let's figure out theoretically how we can find the value of this capacitor here. We have several equations at our disposal, some including calculus, and others are quite complicated. But the simplest equation, and most effective to use it seems, is this time constant equation, which is just the time constant equals the resistance times the capacitance. And the time constant is the time it takes for the capacitor to reach 63.2% of its input voltage. So let's say that we get a microcontroller to measure just how long the constant is through a 1K resistor. We can divide that constant by the resistance to find the capacitance. And this Atmega 8A microcontroller can do all the timing and math for us to find out any capacitance. Now we just need to design a circuit around it to find out the capacitance value. We can select a different resistor values to ensure that no matter the capacitance, big or small, the timing won't be too short for the microcontroller to read, or too long to bore the operator. And so using my calculator, I created a chart of resistances based on timing. The values of these resistors range from at most 10 mega ohms all the way down to 100 ohms. And so we can switch which resistor we use to get a balance between accuracy and the time it takes to measure the capacitor. Now that we have the resistor part out of the way, we can determine how the program should work. First, the microcontroller will discharge the capacitor quickly by outputting the 100 ohm resistor to ground. Then, once the capacitor is at zero potential, we can deactivate the connection to ground and output a high level on the largest resistor. If it takes too long, say half a second, then we move on to the next resistor, discharge, and repeat until we reach a resistor that either reaches the full 63.2% of the input voltage or the last resistor. Then we measure how long it took to reach the correct voltage level and divide that by the current resistor to get our capacitance. Now, setting up a test circuit, I wanted to start with some output so that I could see what the microcontroller was reading. And for that, I went with this four digit seven segment display. It uses multiplexing with a common cathode. So after connecting the pins to my microcontroller, we can see that it is able to properly display values. By the way, if you are curious about multiplexing, you can check out my previous video on the LED matrix. And now we can finally test our capacitance mathematics on this microcontroller. So, after setting a reference voltage of 63.2% of 5 volts using a resistor divider and connecting it to the analog comparator, I can generate an interrupt when the capacitor reaches the time constant voltage, and connecting the output of that to timer 1, we can get a precise time measurement. If you are still confused on how it works, feel free to look at the code and schematic in the description. Now running the test circuit with a 22 microfarad capacitor, we can see that it is decently accurate. I also decided not to use all the resistors because the higher ones did not give accurate values at all, and I only left the 100 ohm and 10k resistors in the circuit. And while the circuit works just fine, it's time to make it permanent because using this on a breadboard is very impractical. And so after soldering and fixing a few bugs for a couple hours, the circuit is complete and we can test it using some capacitors. Now this device is not very accurate, but it at least gets close enough so that we can tell that it is working. And now it's time for the best part. If you have enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing so you can see my other projects. And have a good one.